by Talmers. They've been around since the late 1800s, designed to protect a rider's head from injury. But a hell of a lot has changed since then, so let's get up to speed on how we've gone from this to this. Safety helmets have an interesting history in the world of cycling. Go back nearly a hundred years and they were made of nothing less than stitched together bits of leather and offered, well, little to none protection. So we're going to take you on a whistle-stop history tour to see how we've ended up with helmets like this, the new Giro Eclipse with all of its fancy pants tech and incredible looks. Picture this, it's the year 1970 and Elvis Presley has just topped the UK number one charts with his song, Wonder of You. Oh, thank you very much. But more crucially, in the bike racing world, Eddie Merckx had just won the Giro and the Tour, but crucially, bike helmets were not mandatory, although there were a number of professional and amateur riders that could see the benefits of wearing one. If we move forwards into the 80s, manufacturers started to use expanded polystyrene or EPS foam in their designs and that tough outer shell. All designs which we'll be familiar with from modern day helmet designs. But it was in 1986 when designer Jim Gents came up with the idea of a lightweight helmet and created the company Giro Sport Design. He used this to bring his concept to market and the lightweight helmet was a big hit and sold in huge numbers. But pro racers, even in the 80s and the 90s, were sceptical about the need to wear helmets. They are a bit of a fussy bunch and often slow to adopt to new technologies. But they didn't know about the aerodynamic advantages of wearing a helmet. That's why we see those pointy looking helmets in time trials. And still the helmets we see today still have the same shape as the helmets in the 80s and the 90s. Throughout that time, we saw some riders choosing to use helmets and some choosing not to. Sean Kelly actually won Milan San Remo wearing a helmet, whereas Greg LeMond in second place did not. Kelly had planned to attack on that final descent and was prepared to take such risks that he felt that wearing a helmet was a sensible option. Talking of Greg LeMond, this is actually the original Giro Air Attack that he used to great success back in the early 90s. And this one is even signed by him himself. But this helmet actually uses a lot of the modern characteristics we see in helmets. So foam EPS, a hard outer shell and the vents at the front too. But the shape of this helmet actually offered a lot more aerodynamic advantages to not wearing one at all. Into the 2000s next and we gradually see the use of helmets become more commonplace amongst amateur riders and people cycling for pleasure. But it wasn't until 2003 when the UCI changed its stance of the use of helmets in bike races from advisory to mandatory. But even then, they still had the rule which allowed riders to remove their helmet at the end of a race up the finishing climb, provided that that climb was at least five kilometers in length. A bit bizarre, really. So presumably, the UCI assumed that nobody would ever crash when cycling uphill. Penalties for not wearing helmets when required included fines up to 10,000 Swiss francs, UCI points deducted, and even disqualification. Once helmets became mandatory, we really saw helmet manufacturers up their game, making helmets that were lighter, had more ventilation, and met the safety requirements. But we'll get into that in a minute. This is an air attack from 2013, and at the time was considered quite the revolutionary bit of kit. It was 12% faster than Giro's top spec road helmet. It features six vents to cool the rider and its design met the UCI's regulation for use in road racing. And I guess it could be considered the helmet which kicked off the aero road helmet category. Giro have long had an association with road racing at the pinnacle of the sport. And these are two custom designs that they've made. This is the synth finished in this World Champions edition for Mariana Voss when she was world champion back in 2014. And then this is the Vanquish finished in Groupama FDJ colors. This helmet followed on somewhat five years after the air attack, but with additional ventilation, more aerodynamics, and a magnetic visor. Its overall silhouette is very similar to the original air attack, but with a lot more tech features and safety features, which is great because, well, that's the main reason we wear helmets, is to keep us safe. 
In the Eclipse, which is Giro's latest road helmet, we've got loads of cool safety features built in, such as the spherical technology developed in partnership with MIPS. And this uses a dual layer construction and allows the sections to move independently of each other to help redirect the impact and the force if you are unlikely enough to have a crash. We've also got a dual layer construction using that EPS foam. And this is to enable the helmet to offer greater protection through a number of different types of impacts. This version of the Eclipse is the 2021 Canyon Tram Women's Team Colours. It is the latest aero helmet which has great ventilation and looks pretty cool. So let me know down in that comment section below what you think of this. This helmet has 14 wind tunnel optimised vents that channels air inwards at the front and then draws it out at the back whilst keeping the head cool. And I mean, that is pretty cool. But the weight in this helmet is actually surprisingly similar to the original air attack back in the 90s. But this helmet has so much greater protection. It has better aerodynamics and better ventilation and all round far exceeds the original air attack back in the 90s. Hope you enjoyed this whistle stop history tour through the evolution of bike helmets. They've come a long way, haven't they, Alex? But let us know down in that comment section below what kind of helmet do you prefer? Do you prefer a super aerodynamic helmet or one with a few more vents in it? Right, see you later. Nice helmet. Bye. Cheers.